Hello greetings and welcome back to another video in which we will be working through multiple choice questions. So question number one here says, what is the correct chemical name for the compound that has the chemical formula Fe2SO43? Now we've learned off by heart that SO4 is simply sulfate. So we know either option A, C or option D is the correct answer. Iron, which is Fe, is a transition metal, and it's found over here on the periodic table. We remember that whenever we name ionic compounds, then we need to write down the charge of the transition element in the name of the chemical. So in this case, we know that sulfate is SO42 minus. And over here, we require three of these, giving us an overall charge of negative six. We see that in order to balance this out, we need two ions, right? So Fe2. So that means overall, we need a positive six, which is going to be divided by two. Each one of the iron ions will therefore have a charge of positive 3. So the correct name for this compound is therefore iron 3 for the charge on the iron, the iron iron of course, sulfate. So D is the correct answer to question number 1. Question number 2 says, which one of the following is the correct formula for aluminium phosphate? Aluminium is Al. Phosphate is a polyatomic ion, given as PO4, 3 minus. Okay, so PO4, 3 minus, it has a charge of negative 3. If we go to the periodic table, we see that aluminium is over here in group 3, or the modern group 13. When we write down the charges, we have plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. So aluminium is going to get a charge of positive 3. Therefore, the ratio in which the aluminium will bond to the phosphate ion is 1 to 1 because we have a charge of positive 3 and negative 3. And the correct answer to question 2 is simply B, ALPO4. We can now move on to question number three. It says which one, sorry, which of the following is the chemical formula for carbon tetrahydride? Carbon is a non-metal. Hydrogen is a non-metal. So over here we are actually dealing with a covalently bonded substance. And as you can see, we have a prefix, which tells us that we have carbon bonded to four hydrogen atoms. The correct answer to this question is therefore D. This compound's common name is methane, but the chemical name is carbon tetrahydride. Moving on to question number four. It says, some table salt is fully dissolved in water. The result is A, a heterogeneous mixture, B, a homogeneous solution, C, a heterogeneous solution, or D, none of the above. We know that when we have a heterogeneous mixture or solution, then it is easy or possible for us to distinguish between the components of the mixture or solution. But in this case, when we take table salt and dissolve it fully in water, we know that we will no longer be able to see the table salt. The solution is therefore a or an homogeneous solution, and therefore option B is the correct answer to this question, question number four. Moving on to question number five, this is the last question we will have a look at in this video. It says, which one of the following statements correctly describes a pure substance? Is it A, it contains only one type of molecule? B, it contains free atoms and molecules. C, it contains many types of molecules. Or D, it contains many types of free atoms. So remember, we get two types of pure substances. Number one is an element, and number two is a compound. An example of a compound is a molecule. A molecule is basically a covalently bonded, well, a substance, if we can call it that. So when we look at all of the options, we see option B is a mixture. 
Option C is a mixture as well. And option D is a mixture too. So therefore the only pure substance is A, which is basically describing a compound, specifically one type of molecule. This brings us to the end of this video. In the next video, we will practice some more questions in, on this section on or called matter and materials.